Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Bug Bounty Redacted. Today I'm going to be going through second order subdomain takeovers and a logic bug leading to denial of service. So what are second order subdomain takeovers? Well, second order takeovers occur when there are references inside a web application, for example an iframe or a script, to an asset that can be claimed by the attacker. So for example, let's say that there is a URL which is like usercontrolledname.example.com and it's embedded as an iframe in a web application. Let's say that this person who's registered this account has decided to delete their account and no longer have an account on this service. That means it could potentially be taken over by an attacker. So this takeover may allow for partial or full page control of the application you're attacking. And these takeovers are usually discovered by crawling and evaluating all of the outgoing embedded resources, such as scripts, iframes, and forms. So essentially, when you want to find a second order subdomain takeover, you need to be looking for embedded resources. That's usually where there's going to be references to URLs that may be something that you could still claim as an attacker. What does a report look like? Well, in this report, I started it off by saying, look, we've, it's possible to take over all the event pages, and this could lead to phishing of users through this takeover. I was able to find a number of pages on this domain, and it seemed to be old event signup pages. Turns out that these event pages once used the service wufu.com to manage signups and other event logistics. But since these are so old, I found that they no longer use Wufu, well, Wufu no longer has an account for this company, and it's possible to take over that Wufu subdomain uh, in general. Wufu is like a form service, just to fill everyone in. And you can sign up on Wufu under whatever name you'd like, and that becomes your subdomain that's then embedded into other pages. So I gave them an example of a, of a page that was embedding a Wufu form inside. And I said, the form is embedded through the following iframe, where you can see there's a reference to subdomain.wufu.com slash embed slash the key, and the same for the form. And we can see that it's an embedded form from this specific endpoint. And even though the embed IDs looked unique, they're actually not. They're something that you can specify yourself. So what I did was I created an account on wufu.com using the subdomain that was referenced inside the HTML, and I was able to create that successfully. Once I had done that, I was able to then take over the forms on the page and then take over these pages entirely because it was now referencing an iframe and a form that pointed to my Wufu account. The form displayed my POC, which was just a field for a username and some text stating that it's for HackerOne's bug bounty and a capture field. We can see that, uh, what I said was we can see that this form has been taken over by simply visiting these links. And once you visited these links, you would see immediately the contents that were attacker controlled, i.e. controlled by myself. So this worked on a number of different pages for this target, and I was able to show the impact by showing all the different pages that I was able to take over through this second order subdomain takeover. Some of the risks that I mentioned was essentially the ability to add arbitrary JavaScript uh, to the forms that run on, under the scope of the Wufu domain. However, uh, a big risk is probably a, a form that fishes usernames and passwords because it's under the origin of this domain, which belonged to this organization. You could also have defaced a bunch of these websites and a bunch of these pages just by putting in a malicious form that defaced the page. Sometimes the impact can be increased because some of these forms autofill and you could make it such that it autofills the username, but it still asks them for their password, making it even more believable for phishing. I suggested that I could delete my Wufu account or they could get rid of all the references to these forms and iframes in general. The next bug I want to go through is VK account DOS through a logic issue in the OAuth flow. So um, there's this whole concept of OAuth account association, which is essentially when an application has OAuth and a third party auth provider such as Facebook or VK, which is a popular social media network in Russia. Um, and it's worth checking for OAuth related flaws whenever you come across any of these flows. One of the logic flaws is where you can associate your account with an arbitrary social ID. So that means that you can associate your account on the web application with an arbitrary ID on Facebook or VK, for example. And this could potentially prevent legitimate users from accessing their social profiles with the web application and ultimately lead to a DOS scenario. That was really the case for the report that I, I sent in in this scenario. So in this report, I uh, started off by saying that, you know, one must attach their VK account for this application. And the flow for this application goes like something like this. You log into the application, 
you visit this and you attempt to sign up and it asks you for your VK account, which is your social media account. Upon clicking the VK attach button, you're redirected to vk.com for the OAuth procedure. And then after that, once the VK account is attached, a post request is sent to this URL, which then processes this uh, attachment to VK on your account. Um, so essentially this web app was going through this OAuth flow in order to associate your account with a VK account, which is a social media account. What I found was there was a bug in step number five, which was essentially the post request being sent to associate the account. What I found was, is you could essentially associate your account on this web application with an arbitrary VK account. So what you could do is you could essentially associate the account with a VK account that hasn't been attached yet to this application and lock out anyone with that VK account. So you can log into the application, observe the HTTP request and extract the session ID and then send the following post request. So you can see in this post request, I'm sending it to the endpoint that associates the VK account with my account on this application. And it requires two parameters, one which is the session ID and the other which is the VK ID. Once you've replaced the session ID and the VK ID with the victim's VK ID and send the request, your web application account is now associated with someone else's VK account. And that means that for that person's VK account, if they wanted to legitimately use this application, they wouldn't be able to because it's already associated to another account. So essentially you've dosed someone to using this web application because they can no longer associate their VK account with this web application. This concludes this episode of Bug Bounty Redacted. I hope that you were able to learn something from this episode and I look forward to um, presenting even more episodes to you guys in the future. Um, thanks a lot for all of your support and I really appreciate you checking out this channel and my videos.